What's up everyone? How you doing? Welcome back. It is another stream highlights, but this one is going to be a little bit different. So as you can see right over here, we're talking about Hi-Fi Rush. That is a game that came out by uh, Bethesda, I believe. Uh, it was day one release on Xbox Game Pass, and uh, it was kind of a stealth release. It was like out of nowhere that they decided to send it out. And at the time that I decided to play it was just after I had beaten Sifu, um, or gave up on Sifu, gave up on Mega Man X series, and was just like in kind of a really, really not great headspace. And so I needed something new and something fresh, and so I decided to jump into Hi-Fi Rush hearing a lot of a lot of great things about it. Uh, so what's different about this stream highlights is that it's not going to be a, a match in Apex or a, a, a thing in uh, uh, Monster Hunter or Remnant from the Ashes. This is just going to not quite be a review, but my overall experience, how I felt about the game, and just in general... If I think the game was worth playing or not, and 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 and, and things things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just in general talk about it, and over the top you're gonna see just gameplay uh, features, gameplay aspects, based on what I might be talking about, what what I might be showcasing uh, at those times. Um, so let's just really get right into it. To start off, like I said, we're talking about Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, it, the game itself is beautiful. It's a wonderfully cel-shaded, cartoony style game with these awesome transitions from in-engine gameplay to like cartoon 2D um, cinematics and then back to in-engine that all is based around the music that's playing. The thing about this game is that it is a rhythm action fighting game. We've done rhythm games before in the past with um, Metal Hell Slinger, and uh, we did not click with that one. That game lasted one stream, and that's about it. But this one, I was just full in, all in on this game. It was so fun. The music is funky and jazzy. Uh, I'll try to put some music on the background right here if I can, but some of it is licensed. A lot of it is licensed, but they do have a streamer mode, so... You might really, it might benefit you a lot to not play this on stream if you're a streamer. Uh, but it also, the, the streaming music is really good. It did a lot better than, say, Guardians of the Galaxy, where the streamer mode music actually goed along with the ge goed, went along with the game. Whereas in Guardians of the Galaxy, the streamer mode music like didn't stick with the game itself at times. It was just dead silent when it was supposed to be the licensed music. It didn't work. This game, it worked very well. Uh, how the game plays is it is a rhythm-based combat game. You don't have to play with the rhythm. You don't have to hit on the rhythm. You have to be good to play on the rhythm. But all of your attacks hit on that rhythm to try to help you. The entire world itself reacts to the rhythm and to the beat. And so it tries to help you know when to press a button. The better you are on beat with the bu your button presses, the more powerful your attacks are going to be, the more successful you're going to uh, be in the game in general. There's a ranking system with every uh, fight. There's a power-up slash level system. It's just overall super, super well put together and fun. Uh, the world itself is great. It, it's super. Uh, it's it's a very linear game. It's level based, which is a game I haven't seen a lot of that in modern gaming in so long. But it is very linear. It's not open. You go from point A to point B. You go from level to level to level. Uh, some of the levels can be very long. I remember some of them being at least a half hour to forty five minutes long at times. So this isn't a quick pick them up and play game. You have to actually dedicate some time into playing it. Uh, there are some rhythm games and puzzles that go along with it. Uh, time button presses, not quite quick time events, but like hot take, I don't hate quick time events. I'm telling you guys, I don't mind quick time events. They're fine. I, I actually enjoy them. Um, but there are like kind of quick time event, but it's also on rhythm, uh, which is how they, they work that around. 
Uh, there are some collectibles that you can get. There are locations that don't unlock until after you beat the game that I actually even haven't had a chance to jump into. Um, but but overall, it just it looks it it just it all works so well with the whole world just bouncing and bumping, um, and 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 hitting the beat and just looking. Just, I just I'm in awe struck. I'm in awe by this game and how the game looks and works and feels. Uh, one of the best parts about the gameplay itself are the boss fights. So many of the boss fights are unique combat mechanics with each and uh, each one. Uh, one of the boss fights feels, I believe, like a side-scrolling battler. Another one has a different feeling to it. I can't quite remember all of them, but I just do remember that each of them were different and had their own unique mechanics, which I was kind of expecting those mechanics to come into play further on into the game, but they tended to just be boss-specific. And the final boss wasn't over-reliant on any of these, so the, which makes, for me, a redeemable aspect of the game. Because you don't have to sit there and try to learn a new mechanic for the final boss. That was my biggest issue with game again, with Sifu, was the final boss. It negates one of your abilities, and you couldn't really use all of your abilities or your loadout to your advantage. Because one of your abilities just wouldn't work. And it just it sucks. It's kind of cheating, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, the bosses were super fun. The game itself, like I said, has post-game content going and completing challenges there's special rooms that you see and explore as you're going throughout the game that you can go back to after you beat the game again unfortunately i have not been able to jump into those but it is something i do want to go into at some point when i just like have nothing else going on the music in this game i've said before i've said already it's super fun um, there wasn't a single track I didn't like. It was super funky, super jazzy. It, it kind of really hit a lot of the different spectrums of music uh, in gaming and just all different kinds of music genres. And there might have been like some rap, some hip hop, some rock, uh, some jazz, some funk, and all of that. Like it, it was just everything. There was nothing, nothing like boring, nothing bad about the music. At least for the unlicensed music. The licensed music, I don't really know what it was. I didn't get to check that out because I was playing it on stream. The uh, story itself, though, this is one of the parts where the game kind of falls. It's not special. It is generic. Big corporation is bad, and the uh, accidental protagonist with big dreams becomes hero. Um, there's nothing really out there. Uh, outlying with this story itself it just is kind of there but it works because a lot of the game itself has a lot of good humor um just fun vibes and good humor that actually like pulls the game along besides just being a game about stopping a big bad corporation um you gotta shout out the voice cast you've got such good voice acting in, in all of these and robbie damon playing uh, the lead character was fantastic. I, I honestly didn't realize it was him until like halfway through. And I only really know Robbie Damon from Critical Role. But I, I've i really fallen in love with Robbie Damon. His voice acting capabilities and, and everything he does. He's just fantastic. And so if you get a chance to check out some of his lines. Some of the, some of the game and some of the work that Robbie Damon does. Go check him out on Instagram and whatnot. He's he's a really cool guy. And, and he's an awesome voice actor. I honestly cannot remember the rest of the voice cast i should have looked this up before doing it but like i said it's not a full-blown review this is just what i remember it's been about three months since i played this game so this is just still my impressions of the game uh there are tablets and things that you can uh, go and read that bring along the humor as well as some of the sort of lore and all of the different characters and bosses have different personalities within themselves that actually make the uh the game itself just worth exploring and trying to understand these the, the 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 details of everything i loved every bit about all the characters uh some of the characters i started to fall for smidge i love you smidge and i will live and die for smidge there's something about gaming in today's age where they make fridges that people love and this was one of them um but yeah overall the game itself was just very fun and uh, exciting to me. I loved 
playing it. I loved just getting that new, fresh feel. I don't know if I enjoyed it as much because I had such a bad couple of weeks with gaming with Sifu and the Mega Man X games, or if I just genuinely liked this game. I think it's more the uh, latter than the former. I think I just genuinely like this game. I really love the rhythm aspect. I love rhythm games. Amplitude and Frequency were some of my favorite games back in the day. Uh, that's why I tried Metal Hell Slinger on my stream, and it, it, I was it was unfortunate that it was an, an arena shooter, and it just didn't work or didn't click with me. But I, I do always think about going back and trying the post-game content and things like that. Once I like clear up a lot of the other backlog of games that I'm working on, I do want to jump back into this at some point. Um, I 100% think this game is worth it. If you didn't get it on Xbox Game Pass, which is still available on Game Pass, that's how I'm showing the, the, the side panel. If, it, if you didn't get it on Game Pass, you can absolutely check it out uh, or buy it anywhere. It's available most likely just on Xbox. Check the check it out for sure. Absolutely check it out. It's totally worth it. It's such a fun game. It's maybe about 12 to 14 hours long, but there is post-game content that might bring it up to like 15 to 20 hours. Definitely worth checking that out. Uh, if they were to ever make any sort of sequel to Hi-Fi Rush, I would be sold immediately. 100% in. Bethesda, give me a smidge plushie or pin or anything like that for smidge uh as well as there's a little like um i don't remember snail guy in it that i i want a, a figure of that as well give me any of those i'd be so happy give me all the merch for this game i want it i want more i want to play this game more i want to experience this game more it was just super fun seem to have a new friend hi smidge I hope it is not replacing me. But that is really like i said that's all it's going to be that's all this is going to be this week um i and putting a lot of work into this, trying to pull clips and trying to show you what I'm trying to show you. Um, and showing off the game. If you want to see more of my gameplay, at the end of this, I'm going to link to my playlist from my VODs. They're longer format, but you should definitely check them out and watch them if you liked this game. If you like any of my, all of my stream highlights, if you want to check out more of my stream highlights, I will link to that play, to, play, play the rest of this playlist as well. Man, I can't talk. Um, as well as just check out all of my other YouTube content. I'm currently, at the moment of recording this, still doing The Long Dark. I've got a couple of episodes recorded and banked up for that. I have a couple of other series that are coming out once The Long Dark ends. I'm working on a Jedi Fallen Order highlights. And hopefully getting some more Monster Hunter and Remnant from the Ashes to try to step away from as much Apex content that I've been doing lately. So I appreciate you guys so much for hanging out and being here. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this informative at least. Um, be careful. Be safe. Do go check out the Hi-Fi Rush live stream VODs. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this channel so you can see and get up the updates of all my other content. Check me out on twitch.tv slash beyond our score walnuts. Um, be good. Be safe. Uh, always have your loved one. I can't remember everything I said. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And of course, like always, be sure to remember Smash Soft. I'll see you all next time.